What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Tots Wrestling and today I am fantasy booking Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam 2021. If you haven't seen my fantasy booking videos before, all this essentially is, is just me planning, writing and showing you guys my own custom story about what I want to happen in WWE. So without further ado, let's get right into Lesnar Lashley SummerSlam. Let's do it. Okay guys, now before I get started, I just want to mention that this isn't entirely fantasy. I have to pick up my fantasy bookings, sort of where we are right now on WWE TV, and I fantasy book what I want to happen in the future. Everything that's happened, I can't change. It's already happened. Which currently, right now, this story is taking place at Hell in a Cell. That's where it's going to pick up. Hell in a Cell 2021, which is currently this Sunday. So that's where we're going to start off. Everything from then onwards is completely fantasy booking by me. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. It's just what I want to happen. So let's get right into it. So kicking things off, we are at Hell in a Cell 2021. It is a WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. These two are going to have a hell of a battle, but in the end, it will be Bobby Lashley holding up the WWE Championship, retaining the title against Drew McIntyre. The cell has risen above the ring and Lashley stands above McIntyre, holding the title up high as Drew lays on the ground when we hear this. Everyone in the Thunderdome goes on their screens as they do when they react because there isn't a live crowd and Brock Lesnar makes his WWE return the first time we've seen him since Drew beat him for this title at WrestleMania 36. Lesnar storms down to the ring staring a hole through Lashley jumps up on the apron you know we get that apron pyro that Brock gets when he jumps up and grabs the rope staring through Lashley. Lashley wants none of it. He takes his WWE Championship and he leaves the ring walking away looking quite Quite intimidated and that leaves Brock Lesnar standing over an already beaten down Drew McIntyre. Lesnar smells blood. He jumps on Drew McIntyre, punches, elbows, busts him open, makes him bleed, injures Drew McIntyre and then finishes it off with a big F5 in the ring staring down at Drew as the camera cuts to black. The next night on Raw is a big night for WWE. Brock Lesnar has just returned. People are tuning in to Raw to see why Brock Lesnar's back, what he has to say. But we kick off with MVP standing in the ring cutting a promo, completely ignoring the fact that Lesnar returned last night, saying how the almighty Bobby Lashley injured Drew McIntyre and is gone. He's gone from WWE for the time being. He's finally eradicated Drew and the almighty stands tall. Still, your WWE champion. Now, there's two people in the back that aren't happy about this. One of them being Brock Lesnar. The second one being Paul Heyman, who comes out, ladies and gentlemen, interrupting MVP. Paul Heyman makes his way down to the ring, talking to MVP, saying how Brock Lesnar wants the WWE Championship back. And he doesn't care who he has to beat to get it, but currently... Bobby Lashley has the WWE Championship and Lesnar wants it back. Now, MVP, you know, stands up for himself as he always does. He's not a scared manager. Says that if Brock Lesnar wants an opportunity against the Almighty, he's going to have to earn it just like everyone else. And with that being said, Lesnar's music hits. He storms down to the ring, picks up MVP, who is still injured by the way, he isn't medically cleared to compete and hits him with a big F5, picks him back up, another F5 and once more three F5s to MVP, injuring him even further, taking him off TV and the whole kicker here is the fact that Bobby Lashley has not made his way to the ring to protect his manager, he has just sat in the back and let this happen. 
So with that being said, we move on to later on in the show where Kofi Kingston has a one-on-one -on -one match against Bobby Lashley who is without MVP, who has got so many things going on in his head. He's worried about Lesnar. He's worried about MVP. He's worried about losing his WWE Championship that Kofi Kingston actually steals one again and picks up a big victory over Bobby Lashley with a roll-up. Now he turns around to Adam Pearce and is like, look Pearce, I've beaten Bobby Lashley before. I've just beaten him again. I mean, come on, give me a WWE Championship opportunity. Drew McIntyre's gone. I'm the current top star contending for the WWE title. So why not have me compete for the title? And Adam Pearce is like, you know what? You're raising very good points. McIntyre's injured. Uh, he got injured a couple of weeks ago at Hell in a Cell. And I suppose, Kofi, you are a good option. So the match is made. At Money in the Bank, it's Kofi Kingston versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. But SummerSlam's just after Money in the Bank. And we need a number one contender for that show as well. So Adam Pearce is thinking about that and he thinks, look, we need to do some long-term planning. I need to have a WWE Championship match set in stone for SummerSlam. So I'm going to make a battle royal for the number one contendership. And the winner of that battle royal will face the WWE Champion, whoever that may be, Kofi Kingston or Bobby Lashley, in the main event of SummerSlam for the WWE title. So the next week on Raw, in the main event, we have a number one contendership, WWE Championship 30-man battle royal. The winner faces the WWE Champion at SummerSlam for the title. Now, there's a lot of people in this match, and there's not many current top stars on Raw that are, are sort of doing single stuff. Like, you know, you've got Orton and Riddle, who are in the tag team, obviously. You've got Kofi, you've got... Jeff Hardy, you've got these guys that can be top star calibre, but they're just not being booked right currently. So that's why I wanted to do a battle royal, because that way, it's, instead of me just throwing random guys in a match with no story, battle royals, there's never a story. It's just opportunity. So I can do that right now. Now, what we didn't realise was that Brock Lesnar has actually entered that battle royal and he clears House, he takes everyone out. Don't get me wrong, I'm not having him be overpowered the entire time. He will get beaten down by, you know, guys like the Viking Raiders can tag team him and beat him down every now and then. But Lesnar's in this battle royal and he survives until the very end where it is Lesnar versus Riddle. The final two in the battle royal, they fight it out for a bit, but you know, German, 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 F5. Lesnar throws Riddle out the ring and he's the number one contender, but no, Lesnar turns around and bang, Claymore kick by a returning Drew McIntyre, sending him over the top rope, eliminating him. Drew McIntyre has just won the Battle Royal and is the number one contender, but Drew was never in the match. So is he the number one contender? Interesting question. The following week on Raw, as you can imagine, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar are seething at the result of the previous week, saying that Drew McIntyre was not an official entry in the Battle Royal and that Lesnar should theoretically, technically, be the number one contender for the WWE Championship. So Adam Pearce comes out and, you know, says to them, you know, I agree with you, I do. Drew wasn't officially in the match. However, the referee's decision is final and they called for the bell after he won. So technically, Drew is the WWE Championship number one contender. Now, Brock Lesnar is not happy with this. And you know stuff gets serious right now because Lesnar grabs the mic and says, Look, Pierce, you make me number one contender or I'll make your life a living hell. And Pierce is obviously like, you know, I don't really want that. So he's uh, he's got his finger in his ear as if he's talking to the boss, talking to management backstage. And, you know, they're trying to come to a compromise. And... Adam Pearce says, look, this is my final offer to you guys. I can't, I don't have the power to, to now turn Brock number one contender instead of Drew. They're not letting me do that. So here's my offer. At Money in the Bank, it will be Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar. The winner becomes the number one contender and faces the WWE Champion at SummerSlam in the main event. Whoever that may be, whether it's Kofi or whether it is Bobby. Now the fans are into this because they're thinking, oh well, if Brock wins we could get Brock versus Kofi too, but if Brock wins as well we could get Brock versus Lashley and that's a match we've been wanting to see for ages and then obviously we've had Drew versus Lashley, we've had uh, Drew versus Kofi. So they know that Drew isn't going into this match winning. They just need to extend. And you, you know, you want to use Brock Lesnar. Me especially, he's there. So I'm going to use him because I want as many Lesnar matches we can get. And then obviously we get the Drew McIntyre-Brock Lesnar rematch from WrestleMania. So 
Money in the Bank comes along. It's Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar. Now, these two have an insanely brutal match. Now, previously I said Drew was injured and he was gone. He was only gone for a couple of weeks. This time, however, Lesnar finishes Drew McIntyre off and beats him with a Kimura lock. But Drew doesn't tap out, no. Lesnar snaps Drew's arm clean in two, writing him off TV indefinitely, where eventually I would have him go to SmackDown during the draft and he can do stuff over there because I think Drew McIntyre's run on Raw is getting a little stale. Not fault of his own, fault of the booking, but mix things up a little. Send him over to SmackDown. I think he'll do great things. But no matter what, Brock Lesnar has just snapped Drew's arm and he is officially the number one contender. Now, Bobby Lashley has also beaten Kofi Kingston to retain the championship. So it is official. Finally, Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship on the following month's SummerSlam. So leading up to this point, I've had Bobby Lashley be a little bit intimidated by Brock Lesnar, not really wanting to get involved. Now, I'm not saying that Lashley's a coward, and that's definitely not how I'm booking him. I'm just not having him put himself in that situation until he has to, which is now. The match is official. It's 100% Brock versus Bobby. So now Bobby Lashley's fired up. He comes out to the ring on Raw and he cuts a promo saying about how when he re-signed in 2018, this is what he wanted. He was promised a match with Brock Lesnar and now he's finally getting it which leads to Paul Heyman coming out and cutting a typical Paul Heyman promo about how you don't really want this match, Bobby. You don't. And all of this is actually a distraction for Brock Lesnar to run down to the ring and go for a big clothesline on Bobby Lashley, who ducks underneath and hits Brock with a big spear, picks him up, a second spear, and then Lesnar gets up one more time, and there's a third consecutive spear, which leads to Lesnar rolling out of the ring in pain, staring at Lashley as he does. He's like... Oh my God, I just got my ass handed to me by Bobby Lashley. What have I got myself into? Brock Lesnar, you know, he's really good at selling facial expressions when he needs to. But Paul Heyman's still standing in the ring. And Lashley turns around and he sees that. And Lesnar injured Bobby's manager. So now it's time for Bobby's payback on MVP's behalf. He grabs Paul Heyman in the hurt lock. Who's selling, he's selling like crazy, you know, as he does. Brock, Brock. Brock! Screaming for Brock to come in and help him until he eventually starts foaming at the mouth and he passes out and Lashley throws him down. And the whole time, Lesnar just stood on the outside staring, just staring, not getting in there, not trying to help Paul Heyman, just watching his manager get absolutely crushed by Bobby Lashley. Now, the go-home show for SummerSlam has come around and now both Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley are managerless. Neither of them have a manager. There's no MVP. There's no Paul Heyman. It's just Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. So Adam Pearce conducts a contract signing for the next week. As it's not been made official yet. You know how WWE contract signings are. The match is confirmed. They just like to do these contract signings. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's a chance for them to both promo against each other. Bobby Lashley insulting Brock Lesnar. Saying that he's a part-timer. Saying that he's going to come back and try and take his championship. And he's not going to let it happen. And you know Brock Lesnar can get on the mic and talk for himself for once. Because Brock can talk. And when he does it's like a special occasion. But now there's no Paul Heyman. Brock has to do his own talking. But we all know where contract signings lead. Of course, the table gets flipped and both men start brawling all over the Thunderdome. Now, the whole Raw roster is coming out and trying to split this up, but these two just won't stop fighting. I've got it down on my notes as Taker Lesnar SummerSlam 2015 style. They're just literally going all over the arena. They're just not stop fighting until they eventually get separated, put into separate cars and driven away. And that's how Raw goes off the air. And now it's time for SummerSlam. So here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for for years, Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam. Both men still managerless. It's just them two. They both make their grand entrances and it's time for the fight. Because this isn't a wrestling match. This is a fight. The two go at it for a 20 minute slugfest. Lesnar giving it his all. You know how Lesnar is. Sometimes he wants to be lazy and just hit Germans, Germans, Germans. No. This is a Brock Lesnar match that is a instant classic. Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar deliver on a whole nother level for 20 minutes. Until Brock picks him up. F5. Pin. One. Two, Lashley kicks out. Pick him up once again. Second F5. And this time, one, two, 
three and just like that the almighty era has ended and Brock Lesnar is once again the WWE champion now this is a controversial decision here and I know a lot of you will disagree with this one however the reason I have had Brock Lesnar go over Bobby Lashley is because of what I'm doing next now, I've got Brock Lesnar being the WWE Champion for at least the rest of the year and probably into about the Royal Rumble time. Now, the reason I've got him as WWE Champion is we all know that once Lesnar goes after SummerSlam, we're not going to see him again until probably the build for Survivor Series. This is why I've done it. Roman Reigns is still the WWE Universal Champion. And now Brock Lesnar's the WWE Champion. It means we're getting Lesnar Reigns at Survivor Series. The Battle of Paul Heyman. Obviously, Paul Heyman managing both Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. So do with that what you will. I'll probably have, you know, uh, Brock Lesnar go into that match. They'll fight off. And then Paul Heyman turns on Brock Lesnar and attacks him. Uh, or, you know, with a chair or something. Turning on him and saying, well, you know... When Bobby Lashley had me in the hurt lock, you did nothing. Roman Reigns would have protected me, but you didn't. So I side with the big dog, with the tribal chief. And uh, with that being said, now Lesnar's on his own again. I would then have the Heymanless Lesnar sort of just disappear for a little while until the build to the Royal Rumble, where he once again has a match against Bobby Lashley. This time, Lashley getting the win on Lesnar and once again winning back his WWE Championship. I'd then have Lesnar probably get drafted over to SmackDown, and then we can have Lesnar reigns again at WrestleMania 38 for the Blue Universal Championship. But there you go, guys. That was my fantasy booking of a Brock Lesnar Bobby Lashley feud. Now, once again, it isn't entirely fantasy. I've had to work with what we've currently got on WWE TV and book onwards from Hell in a Cell. So I hope you enjoy. Let me know how you guys would do it in the comment section down below. And also let me know any other fantasy bookings you want me to do. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope that you guys enjoy watching them. Anyways, I've been Joe from Joe Tots Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye!